Graham, Jake and Philip are three brothers who grew up on a farm with their father George. Before his death, George seemed to become possessed, began to fall into oblivion and show aggression, which aggravated relations between the brothers and eventually Graham left his father's house. But some time later Jake finds him and tells him that his father's curse after his death has apparently spread to Philip. As a proof, Jake shows a video of an insane Philip lunging at him with a hammer. This forces Graham to return to the farm and plunge back into the darkness of his past. The Demon Disorder is a modest Australian horror whose attitude will largely depend on how much you're willing to give it a chance. If you want to, it's easy to brand this little film as a half-assed mess of undercooked ideas, but at a certain angle and through a certain lens, it will reveal itself as an entertaining creative experiment by talented people, made according to all the laws of the modern genre. The main key to this movie lies in its English title, where the word disorder is hidden for a reason. It is often used in combination with the word mental, and here it is quite easy to put two and two together, under the story of demonic possession there is a reflection metaphor about what it is like to live with a person who gradually leaves the clarity of consciousness. If you imagine that under the mysterious obsession of the father of the main characters hides dementia, Alzheimer's disease, or any other mental disorder, much in the confusing plot falls into place, including the fact that the so-called demon, having taken the father of the heroes, jumps over to one of the brothers, as if a hereditary disease, and how exactly it manifests itself, displacing its victim from his own consciousness and gradually replacing it with himself. Moreover, the creators are concerned not so much with the process of human extinction itself, but with the imprint that this extinction puts on his loved ones. Graham, Jake and Philip experience a common trauma, but deal with their pain in very different ways. Going to the metaphorical layer doesn't explain everything in the demon disorder, but here you have to consider that Stephen Boyle, who wrote and directed the picture, is a debutante in both of these guises, and his main career in film has been as a makeup and visual effects artist. He was working on a number of notable films, from Peter Jackson's King Kong and the Spirit Brothers' Daybreakers to I Am Mother and Netflix's Love Monsters. In The Demon Disorder he gives himself free reign and in the second half of the movie goes into a visually impressive body horror in the tradition of either early David Cronenberg or Brian Yuzna, with blood, slime, festering wounds and monsters climbing out of the human body. It should be noted that psychological metaphors, family drama and bubbling ulcers do not always fit together organically and the climax still does not give the catharsis that you are waiting for, but here it is in your interest to squint a little bit and give up on the elegance of the drama, appreciating, first of all, the emotionality of the performance. In the end, the hour and a half was not boring, and in its individual moments the demon disorder strongly resembles the really outstanding last year's movie when evil lurks, also, incidentally, built on demonic possession.